Hello, hello, hello everyone. This is Disgruntled Elk with another Hammer video. I'm um, going to do something a little bit different. Um, running through leagues is cool and all, but I think you generally get more and you learn more from testing against people that you trust to play type. Um, so I have my buddy Will, who will be joining us here in just a minute. And he'll be playing rhinoceroses. Uh, we're just going to go with the teamer version right now. Uh, it seems to be a little more popular. Four color. Not, I don't think there's like a huge difference either. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, in terms of my list, what we're looking at, um, I've cut the... I cut the uh, Horizon Canopy or the Canopy Land for one Igonjo. Because I found that I was basically never cracking the Canopy Land. And I was occasionally taking a few points of damage off it, which can make the difference, especially when you have the four Amarius calls. Um, otherwise, list looks about the same. I did move one needle to the main deck, and I trimmed the third Giver of Runes. Um, after doing some sideboard mapping and things like that, I figured out kind of the card I wanted to replace the third needle on the board was just kind of a blacksmith skill. It's fine. And the way the sideboarding mapping worked out, uh, things just worked out really well. Um, yeah, no other, uh, no other big changes. That being said, let's take a look at his list. So this is basically what he's going to be playing. There might be a couple tweaks here. Um, this is a fairly stock list, nothing crazy, no Charmaz, but I think that'll be better for this testing anyway. Um, and so against, so we see like the one Beseju, one Ottawara, pretty stock. Um, yeah, I mean the Dead Guns, the Fire Ice, Subtleties... Force negations, all pretty common. A uh, couple furies, couple force of vigors that we should be aware of in the sideboard, and flame of Anor is pretty good. We might be cautious around Blood Moon as well, but with the version in the deck we have, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be testing against Rhinos. Um, I will have him kind of chatting when I'm talking through my lines. I will be muted though, so he can't just hear everything I am uh, saying. But anyway, without further ado, we're going to hop into the games. All right. All so, right. All right. All right. So we are here. We lost the die roll, so we will be on the draw. Um, and yeah, I mean, this this hand sucks. We have one land, um, an equipper on three, but that's not great when you just have the one. Um, our opponent did mulligan, so we're going to mulligan as well. Um, let's see. Okay, so they kept six. This hand's like pretty mopey. Uh, I think we can do better on five, honestly. Yeah, this hand is notably better, so I will keep it. Um, I don't think we need. <laughs> I don't think we need second sentinel. Um, I kind of just like Giver into Stoneforge, so I think we bought him one hammer and one sentinel. I don't mind having the other sentinel because it is a. Um, it is another artifact from Metalcraft. I think this is fine. Yeah, so we'll keep this five. Hope it works. Okay. Okay. Don't hate that. Um, and I do think I, I think I'm just going to play the giver here. The reason is because if they're using a removal spell, they're going to kill either one. But the upside of having the giver stick is a lot higher when we go for the stone forge line next turn. All right. So either cycling Lorien or yep, killing the stone forge, sure, sure. And so now we'll see what we draw. If we draw an equipper, we can pretty easily grab hammer here. Otherwise, I might be grabbing Cauldra regardless. We'll see. Okay, so Misty. Um, so I think I'm gonna just play Amarius Call tapped and Esper Sentinel here. Let's see. So if he has a removal spell into third land plus Cascade, we're kind of in trouble. Uh, third land, removal spell, Cascade. So that would be three of the four cards in their hand. Um, it is hard to say. Do you think I'm going to play the Amarius Call tapped here? I think it's very unlikely we will. Um, it's very unlikely we will be casting a Marius Call this game, knowing we're against Rhinos. And plus, this gives us the out of if we draw like, um, like a Surge or something like that, we can go Stoneforge hold up Surge. Um, 
yeah, it's also possible you're supposed to lead with the Esper Sentinel in case they did have the removal spell because then that forces them to take this turn off, but I don't think it makes a huge difference either way, so I'm not going to sweat it. Turning on the ability to go give her into Stoneforge is pretty huge, though. Okay, so we're taking one damage. We will draw a card. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Um, so yeah, next turn, I think we're going to be grabbing Hammer off Stoneforge. Ooh, that's a fun one. Okay. And I definitely should not have played the planes first, but whatever. Um, and I think... So we're either grabbing Hammer or Shadow Spear here. Um, and I don't hate getting a Shadow Spear. Because we may need to race. Yeah, so... They can't hard cast. So if they go, like, Force Negation pitch on the Shadow Spear, so be it. And I am just going to cast the Shadow Spear here. Okay. Yeah, in a shocking turn of events, they've done this. And so this is why I grabbed the Shadow Spear, because if we do get to suit up a creature, it makes it very difficult for them to race here. Okay, yep. I'll take 8, go to 11. Mm. Okay, Cycling Lorien revealed. Now, I will say... Okay, so I'm just going to go Paladin, play Hammer here, and hopefully we hit a 1 or a 0, and our opponent has nothing going on. If they have a removal spell, okay, they did not have a removal spell. So this is an instance where Paradise Mantle is awesome, because <laughs> uh, it will draw a card off of the Pure Steel. Um, and honestly, we can probably just equip here, and then, I mean... I'm not blocking. Right? Well, so they can attack for 8, 9, 10. Yeah. I mean, I'm not blocking the Mewval, right? So. <laughs> and this is kind of what Rhinos needs to have happen, right? They need to have multiple pieces of removal, plus Cascade, um, plus potentially a little bit more. Um, and the reason I'm not blocking the Mewval, so like, yeah, now a Fire Ice kills me. Uh, okay, so they're not attacking with the Mewval. So almost certainly has, do we have Subtlety? Subtlety would beat me. Okay, well, start here. Um, so the question is, are we attacking here? Or the, the question, rather, is are we hammering first? And I think we are not, because the reality is if he has, like, a bounce spell, if he has a bounce spell, then we need to be able to, like, redeploy the paladin. Yeah. So, okay, I like everything happening so far. I will just cast this. Note that if he has a bounce spell now, we're okay. Um, and so I will go ahead and equip here first because if they, if he bounces the paladin, then obviously that's pretty bad for us. Um, now I will suit up, I believe, everything. Um, so it's a 13-13. I would not block rhinos. Um, and this lets us keep a hammer on both creatures. So yeah, I will just pass the turn here. Playing the, the Springleaf Drum doesn't do anything. Mm, I might have messed this up. Yeah, so if we... I mean, like, we're losing to a bounce spell regardless, right? Yeah, because if they have a bounce spell, they bounce the Paladin, uh, or they bounce the Shadow Spear. Um, like, so they can animate, attack with everything. If they bounce the Spear, we take... Mm-hmm. 12, 13, 14. So we don't actually die. Um, okay. If he, if he shocks there, I'm terrified. <laughs> um, and I am priced into blocking. Okay. So surge. Um, I will take... What a weird game. I kind of love everything that's happening. And then I think I'm just going to play out this saga. And I think we can pass the turn, right? Yeah, because I don't think... Because if we go all in and he has... So right now, like, we... I'm pretty sure they don't have a, a bounce spell. Because if he had a bounce spell, we'd be dead. Um, <laughs> so the concern is if they have a bounce spell, they bounce the stone forge. We don't quite die, right? We take three rhinos and a mutavault. Yeah, so we just pass here. Um, yeah, so um, bounce spell would be problematic. But if we move, like, the hammer off of the paladin, then... Paladin can get tagged by a, a uh, dead, the one mana deal too, or it can get tagged by a fire. Look, look, buddy, I need you to chill out. Okay. <laughs> so three rhinoceroses, 
So going to be attacking for an even 20. So we will need to block for sure. Um, I would probably just block with the stone forge. Love to see this. <laughs> what a weird... So I think I'm just going to attack with the stone forge for... See, I, I was like, oh, certainly we won't cast a Maria's Call, but here we are. So if we attack with Stone Forge, we get to kill three Rhinos and gain 12, and we get to keep the Paladin around in case they have fire. So yeah, I think I'm just going to attack with the Stone Forge. I will move this over here. Very little reason not to. We attack, trade with three Rhinos. Yeah, this is fine. And we do get to make a giant construct. It'll be one, two, three, four. 5-5, five, five. so, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, no reason not to do that, because even though he, he knows my list, um, I could have salt, okay, yep, go ahead, make a construct, oh, after damage, whatever, it doesn't really matter, um, I'll equip here, equip here, and then I'll also play this ink moth out, so I can potentially attack, um, Trying to think, do I need the... Actually, we could just... We don't need to put that there. We could just... Yeah, just put the other hammer on the Paladin. Because the, the Construct will beat anything in combat anyway. Uh, we can turn into a 7-7 seven, seven really easily. Yeah, I think we just pass the turn here. Um, yeah, no difference between a 7-7 seven, seven and an 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay, that's fine. Subtlety resolves. He has 12, 15 power in play. Yeah, and I think this game is about over. Upon further reflection, I do like that we played the uh, the giver out to optimize the potential turn to Stone Forge for a Cauldra. Obviously, finding two paladins off the top was like pretty good, <laughs> but uh, you gotta draw good sometimes. All right, okay. And I will make a construct. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to get a hammer here. Okay. I don't hate playing that out. Um, I guess we play out this one first. Um, play the needle. And here I'm going to go ahead and name... Um, I will name Basaju. Because then the Ink Moth can attack for lethal. Force Negation? No, okay. Yeah, so we named Basaju. Um, or actually, Ottawara can bounce that, right? Um, I'll still name Basaju. Obviously, this is a a deck where I don't want the needle in the main, but it's fine. Um, okay, cool. So let me check the wording real quick on Ottawara. I think it, I don't think it says non-land, right? It just says. Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, or Planeswalker. Yeah, okay. So it can bounce through that, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, we'll equip here. Now, if they have a removal spell for the Paladin, they just die to this. Yeah, so we'll give it flying again. And then I think I'm going to attack with the Ink Moth and the Construct. We can turn the Construct into a big old idiot. We can make it into an 11. Like, even just trading off, like, like eating a bunch of their board and generating and, and, like, just gaining, you know, 11 life. Yeah. One thing is, because we know Ottawara um, can bounce the Ink Moth Nexus, we didn't need to put two hammers on this. <laughs> so this is one of those things that would happen not, like, this only happens if I'm recording, right? Disaster might strike here. Okay, cool, cool. That's fine. Um, I think he was supposed to kill the paladin, right? Well, I guess he dies. So, so that was uh comically bad. <laughs> um, and I'm fine just throwing the ink moth away here. LOL. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and so now we just pass the turn. The good news is, we're so far ahead. I don't think it really matters. Like even if they crunch us for eighteen or sixteen or fourteen, whatever here. We're just at 30 life. Okay, so like let's not <laughs> let's not do that again. Um, but whatever. <laughs> People at home are probably screaming, what are you doing? He just has the subtlety, which is correct. He did in fact have the subtlety. Um, so against rhinos, I like the surges quite a bit. 
because even though they are lower on force of vigor they still have a pile of them and i like some number of draniths and potentially a blacksmith skill so like these seven are potentially what i'm looking at um the cards that i think are not great are the needle for sure and then what else can we cut here i think we can cut the gift it's pretty medium uh, i definitely like cutting at least a couple ornithopters um, i just think they're pretty medium here and then probably cut the mantle it's either the mantle or the drum they don't actually have that many like they don't really have sweeper effects and they don't have a ton of interaction usually um so i don't mind that and honestly we can just trim another one of those and we can just do these six for these six yeah that seems good to me and of course you want to adapt your sideboarding to see what like depending on what you're your opponent sideboard so if you see something weird or something unexpected game two then you know you should sideboard differently for game three uh this hand's like really insane so i'm going to keep it and just will a second land to the top of my deck we're going to draw another land and then yeah like we we get to hammer on two which is okay so they suspended footfalls see there you go easy peasy i think i will just do this here okay and now if they want to, if, if he wants the Force of Vigor Ornithopter Cigar as aids, I'm okay with this. But the reason I'm doing this is because now if we draw, if we draw, say, um, a, like, Surge, uh, we can now go Saga. If they Force, we Surge in response, and then we can attack and hammer. So he is contemplating killing the Ornithopter here would be my guess. Either the Ornithopter or the aid. He's killing the aid then it's probably like a Pasaju. okay you got it okay so that's really nice um so we lead with saga so i think i just cookie monster here and pass because we can beat rhinos with just cookie monster colossus hammer because we also have the surge um see so yeah, i'm just gonna cookie monster if he does try to pick off the saga like so this is a saga that will just probably not be making any any constructs did we board out the mantle i believe we did no we didn't i feel smart so it is cool that the stone forge can grab a mantle here um see i'm just gonna i mean i'm just gonna attack for a million if he has like force of vigor plus removal spell it's whatever like we're probably not beating that in his four cards anyway okay take 11 and I'll pass the turn. It is fun that even if he got rid of the hammer, the ginger brute would kill with like two shadow spear attacks, which is funny. <laughs> okay, so violent outburst here. Yep, you got it. Okay, what did we reveal? So that is the other thing when you're playing against a cascade deck post board, actually pay attention to what they, they cascade over because it can give you a lot of information that you might not otherwise have had. Okay. okay let's see did he win the die roll yeah he won the die okay so we'll take eight here yep no block skis okay and i will just float mana here of course um yeah and i think i'm just gonna get a hand. trying to think so what if we got a drum like drum bolt ourselves cast stone forge mystic yeah i mean it's probably i'm just gonna get a hammer keep it incredibly straightforward um and i will bolt myself here yeah i'm just gonna use that mana now yeah and so if his last cards are like besaju plus force of negation that's pretty rough uh yeah i mean do this okay looks like we got it cool cool all right cool all right uh thoughts um other than me I like mean, running into the subtlety <laughs> i mean <laughs> like oh i think everything was fine like everything's kind of like as it should be i don't think anything was out of the ordinary like you you hitting double paladin was kind of aids game yeah. one though on your mold of five i was like what the fuck yeah especially like, since i didn't uh, have either in my opening hand yeah i, I was able to check <laughs> i checked yeah i checked one and i was like okay i checked the giver checked the paladin like those were all like very relevant idiots i killed i guess i could have left the esper sentinel but meh. 
I was like, probably killing killing a sentinel so you don't dig deeper for like more hammers and shit. It's like pretty reasonable since you mold the five. So yeah, and I mean using your mana every turn is really important too when you can. Yeah, so. that turn too. I I also had the opportunity to ice. But I was like, you're on a mold of four or five. It's like if you slam two drop, it just kill it. And instead, you just like played Esper Sentinel. I was like, okay. Yeah, it's guess I'll just kill a sentinel. Yeah, the joke was I was thinking, oh, there's no way I'm gonna cast this Amarius call, and then of course, like the game went on for eight more turns or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was so silly. Yeah, yeah, but all right, all right. let's try it again. Yep. All right, and you were on the play that one, so I'll take the the play this time. Sure. Oh, good. Hmm, okay. Perfect. Perfect. So we did win the die roll. Love to see that. Um, but man. So we can go turn one like planes, drum, ift. I don't hate that. Yeah. Obviously, second land would have been great here, but. Oh! <laughs> no! Okay, exiled mute vault, sure. Yeah, and I think I will just play the gift here. All right, and yeah, so if we draw a, a uh, land here, we're in really good shape. And if we don't, we're still okay. Eh, I think this is a this is a keep. It's a little little tight, but he also might kind of blow the the ornithopter here. Nope, just suspending a footfalls. Okay, so he could have dead up. So I think we are just going. If we just go like stone forge, grab mantle. That doesn't seem right though. We can go. So we go Stoneforge, grab Mantle. We kind of have Metalcraft regardless. Um, we can also go Stoneforge, grab Cauldra, force the removal spell on the Stoneforge. And then if we hit a land off the top. Okay, well, I kind of like Paradise Mantle here. Weird. Um... It is very tempting to get this uh, this cauldra, but yeah, I'm just gonna get the paradise mantle here, and I will play out the ornithopter now because having creatures without summoning sickness is really relevant with the uh, the paradise mantle. Okay, stone forge down, checks out, and that tells me there's probably not fury in their hand, um, which generally I don't think they're playing many main deck furies now anyway. So and was an insane draw. So I will just play Paladin here. Yeah. Paladin, in a face subtlety the Paladin, I'll put it on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so yeah, we can yeah, let's play the Paradise Mantle out, draw a card. Let's play the hammer. Okay. Yep, you got it. Um Okay. Force of Neg. Okay kind of a tilter <laughs> um i think we're actually well we can't paradise mantle into it at this point so i will just play it tapped um and then if he hit if he cascades here i think we're losing anyway but i think i don't think i'm supposed to respect it so if you respect it i mean if he kills the paladin the game's effectively over because it turns off all of our uh our live equipment draws as well so i think it's correct to not chip in for the damage okay that's a really good draw um and yeah i, I think it's still incorrect to attack here because he could also have like subtlety okay so he gets he gets rhinoceroses on turn five okay yeah rhinoceroses resolve now we will start making like four fours or bigger with this saga, um, which this is kind of why, um, <laughs> this is kind of why I think the matchup is generally favored for Hammer anyway, because they have rhinos. They, they like make four fours, but we make giant critters. Like they make four fours and we, I'm making a 5-5 five five right off the bat, which will turn into a 6-6, six six, a second 6-6. Six six. Um, and we might just straight up get a Shadow Spear here, because then if the Paladin dies, um, we're still in the game. But we'll see 
But um, we'll see what we draw as well. Ottawara. Okay, so what does this tell me? I think I don't. Yeah, I think I think that's my takeaway. I think I do not. Like, I think I'd rather protect something else. Like, because the construct's going to be big enough to. Yeah, exactly. So they can't even tangle. Make a construct here. Casual 5-5. Five, five. It turns off a card draw, obviously. But okay. So now I think I am just going to get a shadow spear here. Because like now we can just equip here. Um, and in basically no world am I attacking or blocking with these ornithopters. So um, yeah, I mean... If he wants to trade two rhinos for a construct, I'm pretty happy. Because, like, if he doesn't block, then we go to 28 and he goes to 11. Um, and if he trades, okay. Yep, I'm just fine letting this happen. So we'll go to 28. Okay, and this is why we did this. Uh, we're going to surge here. Yeah, so now we get to eat his board, gain eight life. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And of course, any hammer draws are excellent as well. That's one of them. Um, weirdly, I think I'm bottoming here. It was we were definitely supposed to stone forge first for that reason, because if it's exactly subtlety, um, well, like honestly, who cares? Maybe we just. I think I'm just gonna play the needle out, and suit up. I'll name the seiju who endures right yeah and let's suit up the construct yeah like who cares i'll attack for eight lifelink trample again so we're at 36 to their 11 and rhinos is not great at catching back up when they're losing a race oh shoot okay well click through that that's fine uh yeah i mean same thing honestly this is probably fine okay so we'll trade off with two rhinos Okay, so we'll trade off with a subtlety and a rhino probably, and I will deal one to them. Take one, Will. All right, and then second main. We do have enough to do everything. Yeah, definitely miss sequence, but I'm not super worried about it. Clicking through was obviously not ideal either, so. <laughs> um. Yeah, we'll move this over here now. And I think we can pass the turn from there. I'm, I'm just not blocking either since we're at 44. So that's two rhinos. We made it through. Ooh. Okay, so we suspended another footballs. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, okay. Doesn't doesn't have the subtlety on board blocker this time. Let's see. We're gonna sideboard. Probably about the same. I liked it last time. Those and these. There is also a reasonable cause to say against Rhino. Specifically, you don't need the Dranids as much, but I think they're they're good enough to where you want at least a few. How do we board? We did want to keep the mantle. Needle. And cut what three ornithopters probably yeah because all the other cards are pretty good um and yeah it is tempting to bring in the skill but i don't think it makes a huge difference so okay he boldly chose to be on the play i like it um so this hand's like really soft to blood moon but i'm going to keep it and i don't think i'm bolting myself here well now i might bolt myself yeah, yeah. And if he kills this, he kills this. It's fine. Um, and I will probably just go, like, Saga into Saga and just, like, make a construct for every turn for most of the game. Um, hopefully we draw, like, a Surge. But we'll see. Okay, that's a fun one. Uh, I will just do this here. And we'll hold the, the Mantle. Okay, so... Ice, sure. Um, and we can pass the turn. And next turn, regardless of whether or not we play the Paladin, I'm almost certainly playing the Mantle out to make the Constructs larger. Okay. So suspend Crashing Footfalls. Play Island. Do we have another one? Uh, okay. 
Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am just going to play this. Let's see. Uh, I don't think we need to play out the mantle here. It is also a consideration that we should have played the tap to Maria's call there. One, because it gives us a potential second white source. But two, that way we can avoid taking three. But we'll see. Okay. So, yeah, let that one resolve. And then I think I'm just going to float mana here. Grab a hammer. We could also grab a... Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, it's float mana. And I could also just see myself getting an ornithopter here. Weirdly. Hammer seems quite good, though, because I'm sure he'll be tempted to tag it if he has a removal spell, and then that turns Fortune into a very, very good card. It's at this point, so if we play... I don't think we play Saga. I think we're playing this tapped. Yeah, I'm going to use this, so that way I can just play this Amarius Call tapped, um, because we do have the, the white mana up with the drum. And, like, if he Force of Vigor is here, I'm, like, not even that sad. Like, what's he kill? The, probably the Saga and the drum, and then we play out the second Saga. But I feel like he has subtlety in hand, which is why I'm I'm like been very tempted to also just like not play these creatures. Um, I mean, we'll see. Playing the playing the paladin might be really good, but it really depends on how this resolves. Because we could just go. We can play a second land, tap the construct. Yeah. Okay. Forge of Anor. Yeah. So happy that we uh. <laughs> <laughs> we chose to grab the hammer. Could bolt ourselves here. I think that's honestly kind of safe. So we could bolt. Like, we could reasonably cast the Samaria's Call at some point, too. Um, I think I'm just going to go Saga and Stoneforge, though. And I think what I'm going to do here is... So if they have removal spell, Cauldre is really bad. I think I'm just going to grab another hammer here. Um, and I do kind of like playing out the Paradise Mantle because that means that the Construct doesn't get... Uh, I don't lose the Construct and the Stoneforge to a single Fury, which I think is pretty pretty significant. Forge a new looking real nice against this Forge a Flame of Anor. Okay, see, okay, I feel smart. <laughs> so he's probably just tagging the Stoneforge here. Um, I could be wrong, but if I'm him, that's what I'm tagging. Eh, it depends on what is in his hand, I guess. We can also... Can we make two Constructs next turn? Uh, we cannot. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Sure. Wow. Okay, so I'm just floating mana for sure. <laughs> like, 100%. Um, float mana. I think we are getting a Shadow Spear here. I mean... Yeah, we can kind of do it all anyway, right? The Shadow Spear here. Um, we bolt ourselves first. No reason not to. Fun one. I guess I will equip there. Um, and we are shy, but I will move this here. Very little reason not to. Uh, yeah, and I think I will attack for lethal damage. So he has to throw the Fury under the bus. So he takes 13 lifelink here. Okay, I was like, wait, I couldn't. Yeah, because if we had been able to Iganjo, we actually uh, win the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to leave everything on the Construct. Yeah, Urza Saga is just real good against Rhinoceroses. But we'll see. Game's not over. Target play draws two. Okay, this is, this is a desperation one for sure. Okay, there we go. All right, 2-0. So let's see. Let's rejoin the the lobby. What up? Yo. <clears throat> Sagas all day. Yeah, I was like, where's my Blood Moon? Blood Moon totally fuck you right there. <laughs> yeah, like I, I kept the hand and I, I, I explicitly said, I was like, yeah, I'll lose the Blood Moon, but I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, I didn't matter. Yeah. The, the Flame of Anal, three, three mana for your one mana card did not feel great. Yeah. That that moment where I paused, where I was like, Springleaf, drum, or hammer. I thought <laughs> about, I was like, I probably feel like I should tag your drum, but I was like, no, I'll just tag the hammer because like you, you you'll draw more white sources eventually. Yeah. So um, the the other piece that was, was my logic. For I, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's completely reasonable. Um, I had four genu in my hand, so I wanted the the hammer to get blown up. Oh, perfect, perfect. Had it all. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. I don't know. It was cooperative for sure. Yeah, like my I don't know. 
like I don't know what kind of draw I can have that will be like, oh, I can just like beat these fucking hammers. Because like every time I'm like, oh, I have something lined up, and then you just like surge for one man. I'm like, I can't beat the one man efficiency. <laughs> yeah. Like um, it's so it's so tilting. Yeah, and even the game where I like couldn't equip a hammer, I was like, here here's a six six construct, right? Yeah, the six six construct. Yeah. So like the what was it game one was it game one where you had the eight eight and then i was like okay let me just like unsummon this other one you're like surge i was like all right guess i'll die <laughs> guess i'll die instead cool yeah um you want to do one more uh yeah sure cool cool all right and i was on the play last game so you get to be able to play this one perfect even though you, you, had the, you had the gemstone mine to just really take advantage. Yeah, I had the gemstone mine with like the <laughs> double fire eyes with the double force and egg. I was like, all right, I should be okay. And I just like never drew any action either. I was like, all right, oh, shoot. guess I'll die. Sorry, I clicked play. It's ah, it's fine. That's all, all right. good. Cool, cool. It's all good. I'll be on the draw then. Okay. So this hand pretty reasonable i think i'm just gonna go planes steel shapers gift for a hammer here just keep it real simple because we have two equippers it also makes it a lot a lot easier to just go go in on this plan okay so the question is yeah yeah so i think i'm going to do this play hammer and then I don't hate playing out the Ornithopter. Yeah. I like Ornithopter because if we hit a zero mana, um, if we hit like any sort of zero mana artifact, we get to immediately equip. Um, we can also just forge a new, equip it. Um, but the reason I played the planes instead of the, the reason I played the planes instead of the Amarius call is because it does kind of scream, hey, I have surge up. Um, the other piece is if we were in the blind, Amarius Call gives away that we're on solitude, and that means we're a little, well, yeah, but uh, I don't think it matters. So he's going to 100% ice here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Checks out. Okay, that's a fun one. So we can do it all. Okay, so yeah, let's see if he has. Okay. And let's just equip to the paladin here, um, and pass the turn. Yeah, not looking, not looking great for for the friend. <laughs> um, we'll see though. Obviously, they could have bounce spells, could have a blood moon here, which would be annoying, but fine. Shardless agent. Okay, so this is actually a spot where it is tempting to just go get a, um, like a a cookie monster. But I think drawing the card, it's game one, so I'm not super worried about Fury or um, Force of Vigor here. Okay. Yep. And I will make a construct. Um, yeah, I mean, Shadow Spear seems pretty, pretty insane. I also like drawing cards. Yeah, so now we get to attack for 13 and just leave everything there. And now play out the aid yeah one two three four five six so if we hit a land we can also cast the Amaria's call for for daggers <laughs> um okay so here i think we just move the spear um so flame of anor because he doesn't have a so he is exactly like mute of alt plus equip like honestly who cares because we still have the forge anew um yeah i think i'm just like fine with this we could move the shadow spear over here and now it, it makes his attacks pretty bad too and we've just been representing surge of salvation the entire game and now of course if if forge anew resolves the game is just wildly over because we can move all of our equipment at instant speed during our entire turn so I, I will probably lead with Forge Anew and kind of go from there. But we will see. Because he's actually... The joke is he's also dead in three attacks from an Ornithopter wearing a Shadow Spear. Since these decks generally don't have a way to gain life. Okay. Okay. So just another one. Um, yeah. So if he has 
if he has a force negation, he's not dead. But if he doesn't have force negation blue card, then he is dead. Um, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I'm just going to yep have to counter that. So if we move all of this here, I think I will play the Thopter out as well. Uh, 17. I mean, I'm I'm fine trading like my board for that. Because he does have to throw basically everything in front in order to not die. Yep. So let's make this a 17 and attack. This is so if we attack with both, how much does he have to put in front? So he has to put 14 in front, right? So we can do that and eat the paladin. Yeah, because he can just like throw three rhinos and the shardless agents in front of the rhino, and then the, the pure steel gets eaten by another rhino. Because I would like to keep my pure steel paladin around. Note, uh, he's also certainly cannot cast his um his dismembers because he has zero black sources and only three life. Alright, so I want to kill the rhinoceroses more than these shardless agents by quite a bit gain 17 plague wind you go to main two put everything on the paladin and pass the turn once again land gets us to the Amiria's call which is pretty sweet but yeah i mean this turn now we can just move everything to the ornithopter as well um, we have a million good draws in our deck we're at 50 life We've beaten two crashing footfalls so far. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape here. I wouldn't hate a yeah. It's like a stone forge would be good too. Okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> probably is correct though because if he has if he has violent outburst, then this gets pretty bad. Well, actually, hold up, hold up. If he has violent outburst, we put both of these onto the ornithopter. We attack for. 11 he gets eight toughness and we gain a bunch of life i mean then this loses to dead gone yeah whatever i guess we're gonna do this it is funny because i i think it actually is correct to do this but it gets countered but that's fine fetching this also lets us just keep our paladin alive which i think is kind of our best plan hey eh? Uh, I think there is a very low chance that this resolves, but it is possible. Yeah, okay. I will not pay. And I do actually want to move the Paradise Mantle back to an Ornithopter. Most of his lands aren't great right now as well. But we shall see. Okay, I will go to 46, and he'll probably... Eh, he might concede. But I will certainly not block, because I do not have creatures that can block. <laughs> okay. So, so if they, so if he, I think we lead with Sentinel and go from there. And I think we move the hammer to the Thopter, Shadow Spear to another Thopter. So we do it like this though, because then, well, I think I'm overthinking this. So if he has Violent Outburst plus Dead Gone, then we will get to draw a card. Um... I mean, I'm fine, I think, just attacking like this. He can't... Yeah, okay. You got it. Probably pay one, I would presume. And I will put him to one life by attacking with my 1-3 Ornithopter. I've ended, like, not a lot of games, but, like, way more games than you would think with a 1-3 Ornithopter just plinking in, like, under an ensnaring bridge or any number of things. Plink! Um... And as much as I would like to, uh, as much as I would like to guarantee I draw a card off the Sentinel, I think protecting the Palace, sure. Okay. Didn't matter. No blocks. Go to 45. Three cards in hand. So we could have Dead Gone. I think we just attack with the Pure Seal and the Ornithopter here. Um. Yeah, if he likes subtleties, then we just move the the Ornithopter uh, Shadow Spear to the other one. But this way, if it's like Violent Outburst, the, the Paladin lives through. Yep, there we go. So he 
blocks. So he chumps the paladin, eats the ornithopter. I go to uh, 46. I move the shadow spear to the other ornithopter. Okay. Suspending crashing footfalls. That is a legal play. Okay. Um, now I kind of like shadow spear onto the paladin attack with paladin because we have this backup one. This could read like any number of things. Like I drew a hammer. Um, okay. Going to do this now while he is low. Going to equip that over there. Um, I'll move the mantle as well because why not? Any equipment off the top is obviously very good. Um, how many counters? Three more counters still? Okay. I was like, yeah, give me a ginger brute. Give me something. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and there, of course, we we uh, I I would just move the the shadow spear to the big paladin and attack with just the paladin. All right, and let's do same as before. I am like very tempted to bring in the skill, knowing that he likes to play a very very interactive game. Um. So we'll see. We can probably make the room. So trim a drum, a gift, three thopters. The needle. I don't want to cut the last ornithopter, but we could. Yeah, we'll try it. Whatever. Bring in the skill. Just because, like, so this is what I'm talking about when I say, like, based on how your opponent plays, sometimes it's correct to adjust your board plan. So knowing that he's willing, like, his his range of keeps is more than just turn three cascade. It's interaction along multiple points into potential cascade. Um, that makes me like blacksmith skill, things like that a little bit more. Um, this is an easy keep. Um, it's not like insane, but it does have Saga, Draneth. has a lot of good pieces. One thing I will note is that I am very tempted to not run out the Saga onto. Um, hmm. I think I'm just gonna play Plains Drum here. So he's probably cycling Lorian revealed, would be my guess. Um, also could be respecting like a Giver of Runes or an Esper Sentinel that he wants to tag. Nope, okay. Grabbed Snow-Covered Island. Played Wooded Foothills. He might, okay, so this kind of screams Blood Moon to me. <laughs> um, okay, you got it. So. I think we do just play out the saga because if he has blood moon i'm actually not that sad if he does it um and because he grabbed basic island and fetched basic forest um i just like it, it's it strongly signals to me that his plan is to blood moon in this game so if this turn he taps out plays blood moon i can then go planes paladin potentially hammer or planes like Draneth magistrate Okay, yep. In a shocking turn of events, in a shocking turn of events, he did, in fact, play the Blood Moon. Okay. So, I think I'm just going to play Plains, Draneth, Sigarda's Aid. Uh, we could just go Plains, Draneth as well. Plains. Definitely playing Draneth. Um, not playing Hammer. <laughs> I, I will play out the Aid here. And now I'm hoping to draw like a Surge of Salvation is probably our best draw in the deck. Dismember, you got it. And do we also have the Cascade spell here? We do not. Okay, so let's play Ink Moth. Play Paladin. There's no reason to to jam the, the hammer when we can just wait. Um, note that they cannot cast Force of Negation for its actual mana cost. See, here we go. Much better, much better. It is very tempting to just go get the cauldron here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm actually, I think I'm going to get the cauldron here simply because it plays so much better around a, um, I think we want to respect rhinos as well. Yeah, but uh, cauldron just plays a lot better around like a force of vigor, which he would not have force of vigor earlier. Um, yeah. Wow. Oh, okay, deck. <laughs> Yeah, and I believe this game is over. The The Surge of Salvation draw was pretty absurd. I think I actually just let this go. Nah, just keep the Stoneforge around. Yeah, and that's... <laughs> yeah. yeah, LOL, okay, is definitely 
a, a good summary of this. So cool. There we go. Okay. <laughs> the thing I could do. Yeah, surge. The, yeah, I, I drew the surge off the top. And I was like, okay, well, I thought I thought I had it locked up, and then the surge just like actually put it away. I grabbed Cauldra because I figured I was like, honestly, we could just cast this thing. Oh yeah, I mean, no. I figured you would have grabbed hammer, but whatever, it doesn't matter regardless. So I was like, eh. like I started with a uh, one light, like the steamments, and then double mm-hmm. Lorien revealed, and then I drew like the foothills. I was like, oh sweet, and got my force, and I drew another foothills, and I drew another land. I was like, ah, all right, we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you uh when you grabbed the basic island, I was like, okay, cool, we're getting blood moon, and then you fetched the basic force. I was like, we're one hundred percent getting blood moon. Um, and so I ran the, the saga out because I wanted you to do that on three. And so not like you apparently had any other choice, but no, I I had like literal zero other plays. Yeah. So I was like, my deck was not having it. No. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like this, this match is just like, feels bad. Anyone that's just like, Oh, like beating hammer or hammer all the time. Like you're probably beating really bad hammered players (laughs) or like, that or your draw was just like insanely better but i mean even then like i, I felt like your draws were like an average what yeah. when i play hammer so nothing too crazy yeah, i mean there were definitely some insane draw steps but like they were insane draw steps where it's like okay we have like 10 or 12 really good draws here so it's like it doesn't really yeah matter. it's just like a combination of things so i'm just like okay well i guess i could like try to play around stuff but like i like the the rhino deck can't really play around stuff efficiently because everything costs like three effing mana if not two you know and so yeah yeah it's 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 not a it's not an easy battle to begin with that everyone's like oh force of vigor it's like well the lists these days are like trimming on force of vigors to begin with already too mm-hmm. so it makes it even worse it's like all right yeah so that's kind of my experience like the the plan a for both decks just like hammer lines up very well against the plan a for rhinos and then hammer is just like simultaneously more efficient than rhinos so it's like like rhinos yeah. a good deck, but the matchup is just not great yeah no it's, it's not a great matchup it is what it is though cool. i think it's fine yeah. plus like the the build like the rhinos build like it's pretty good against like the rest of the meta meta game yes, absolutely so yeah, like like, I don't think Rhinos is bad at all. I think just uh, this was definitely a matchup that I hadn't played a lot recently. And it's like, eh, I probably should. Yeah. Because, like, my main deck configuration also had, like, main deck fucking mystical disputes. And, you know, with the uptick of, like, Merc Tide <laughs> again, too. Because, like, Pygonti t- uh, taking, like, second or chopping the, the finals of that one challenge showcase thingy and then like twin list running it back you know with another showcase or something of that effect so it's just like okay Merc- merktide's back on the menu you yeah. know so yeah preordain's really good for that deck um and pygonti yeah. did not chop he got bodied by hammer lonely hammer oh oh okay <laughs> all right i stand corrected hammer op yeah hammer op but you know solitude sucks terrible yep, you garbage, gatekeep basically. information you gatekeep information like get out of here <laughs> what's that patreon <laughs> what's a patreon what what is that but yeah, yeah. okay cool it was funny because there was one turn where i had the aganjo and i was like if i had one more mana i could have tagged the rhino to kill through the attack <laughs> lamau i was like but yeah i mean basically at no point in any of those games i don't think i guess when I could cast Samaria's Call, having Horizon Canopy turn into another card at random would have been okay, but like, yeah. I was like, honestly, I'll cast this thing, and if it doesn't resolve, cool, but if it does resolve, I absolutely win the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I was like, oh, I'll, I'll counter the mantle, like, I know you had, like, that one game, there was that one game where I, like, double forced an yeah. in one turn, because you put Paladin, and you were like, Paradise Mantle, I was like, no, not not have any of this. <laughs> You like hammer. I'm like definitely not having any of this. So I was like, I, I was like hell bent after that. It's like okay, yeah. I need my top decks to be like kind, and they were like no. <laughs> yeah, we like, we were both right. down to just like I had this like some ornithopters and like a hammer. Yeah, play, I think yeah. Yeah, you had like you had like six. You had like six mana or something like that. Yeah, I think you had six mana. So like you're you're pretty much on the cusp of like drawing like everything that is not a planes in your deck should be like a good draw it was yeah. basically so so i was like i, I kind of have to stop this mantle because it also like 
digs you deeper too so i can't have that yeah, tagging, forcing the the mantle was was correct, especially with the knowledge that you had the second force. Like, very easy decision, I think, right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I tweaked my board plan slightly for the third match. For the third match, I cut the, I think the fourth ornithopter for the the fi- the first blacksmith skill as like the fifth protection spell, just because based on how we had been playing, it felt like you were willing to keep more interactive games or more interactive hands rather than just kind of like. Yeah one piece into rhinos yeah because like my my rhinos plan is like doesn't line well against your hammer because like as soon as you like drop a hammer on it i'm like all right guess i'm on defense forever and <laughs> you know that's not great either yeah so uh i will say though like there a lot of the rhinos decks are running double dismember i cut back on one just to try it so i'm, I'm running one dismember main uh, which I think is still correct. I do like to dismember the double Merktown, I'm not sure about, but like I do like double dismember, so I'll probably bring that back in, maybe trim a Merktide. Um yeah, so fine. that way the deck can have like more of a fair plan. But Yeah. Yeah. But cool. Alright man. Appreciate the uh the games. Yep. Alright. Appreciate the beating. Thanks. <laughs> Send me your cyborg guide, bro. Anytime, baby. Alright. <laughs> later, man. Alright, later. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, I think that um, it depends on the Rhinos player, um, but obviously, you know, um, we kind of saw how the the plans just lined up in that matchup, right? Like, so even when he stopped me from kind of doing my thing a couple games, uh, the Sagas are going to hard carry. At times, they just make constructs that are bigger than the, the Rhinos. Um, I think there was one game I beat two cast rhinos i think one game i might have been three but the reality is like if you can get your shadow spear onto just a big construct you can really just whittle down their board because usually they're having to take additional damage from their lands things like that um but yeah generally when i'm sideboarding against them i like the cauldra because it is a good tool to have um and then yeah you just kind of trim these weaker cards and call it a day we did see the paradise mantle being pretty rad in a couple of those spots um just as a as a, a card draw of a paladin um, most of the time it's basically the same card as springleaf drum for, except for exactly turn one uh, where drum is certainly better but yeah if you expect a ton of rhinos in your area i don't like playing pithing needle in the main but otherwise yeah i mean pretty happy i think the matchups it's not like obviously there were there were a couple games that were very very close but i think with the addition of surge of salvation and the pile of Dranith magistrates i think um it it positions you quite well into that matchup but anyway um you know thanks for joining and watching the games and i hope you all enjoy like comment subscribe all that stuff and have a good one bye